Now it's time to move on to editing and customizing. You will find your editing and timeline tools on the bottom left of the screen. You can move your playhead to a point you want to cut. And if you hit the scissors icon, you can split that clip into two separate clips. And if you need to duplicate a clip, you can select it, then hit this duplicate button. And if you ever need to delete anything, select it and then just hit this trash icon. It's also super easy to rearrange clips inside of Rush's timeline. Just click and drag clips to rearrange them. And as you do this, the clips respond by automatically shifting over. And by dragging the orange handles at the end of each clip, you can shorten or lengthen a clip. So if a clip has more video in it, you can drag it out to reveal more of that video clip. Or if you want to cut out some of that video, you can drag it to the left. And there are a couple other timeline tools that you should know about. For example, if you click on the expand audio icon in the lower left, it will reveal the audio associated with your video clip. And when you do this, you can shorten or lengthen the audio separately from the video portion. You can also see that Rush has placed icons on some of the audio clips here in the timeline. So what Rush has done is it's identified what type of audio automatically that you have in your timeline. For example, you might see a music icon or a voice icon. So this will enable you to easily identify what type of audio you have and optimize it so it sounds better. And below the expand audio icon is the track controls icon. Turning this on will reveal the track controls. So this lets you lock, mute, or even hide entire tracks in the timeline. And Rush supports up to four video tracks and three audio tracks. And at the very bottom here, you can move this bar to scroll through the timeline quickly, and you can grab the circles on the end of this bar so you can zoom in and out of the timeline. So once you're done rearranging and editing your video, you can then use Rush's refinement tools on the right to add finishing touches. If you click on titles here, you can choose one of Rush's awesome built-in title templates to use in your video. In part four, I'll be going into depth on titles. So let's move on to the next item, transitions. You can drag one of these preset transitions between two clips to create a clean fluid transition between them. And below transitions are color presets. You can click on the clip that you want from the timeline and then select a color preset of your choice. And at the bottom, you can control the intensity of that preset with the slider. You can also have further color customization control by clicking on this edit tab. The next is audio. So the audio tools here let you control the overall clip volume if you need to. And there's lots of advanced controls as well. So for example, if you have a music clip in your timeline, if you select it and under advanced, you can choose auto duck and the music volume will then automatically lower against any other audio types like voice that you have in your timeline. So you can move the slider to adjust how much you want the music to duck in volume. And if you look closely after the process is done in the music track, you can see there are shadow dips so indicating the points at which the music automatically ducked. So this is extremely useful for helping you edit fast and getting your video out the door. And the last refinement tool here are the transform tools. Here you can control the position, rotation, and scale of the clip just using these sliders. But if you click on the clip in the monitor, you can actually make adjustments just by moving and resizing the blue handles. And under advanced, you can use the crop tools to crop the top, bottom, left or right of the image as you wish. So you will learn how to add and customize awesome titles in Rush. In Rush, there are two main ways to add titles. The first way is to go up to the plus icon and create a default title that you can edit. Or the second way is trying out different styles by clicking on the title templates in the panel on the right. This panel here shows you a bunch of different built-in professionally designed title templates that you can customize and some of them are animated. So let's start with the first method. Let's go up to the plus icon and create a default title. You can double click on the text here in the monitor to type out your own title. And then from the edit tab under the title panel on the right, you can make further customizations. For example, you can choose your favorite font and style. 
You can also make adjustments to the size using the slider. And if you want to have the option to adjust the character spacing, the line spacing, or even the baseline shift, these sliders are here so you can do that. And lastly, you can adjust the color fill. You can add an outline if you want, or even add a drop shadow to your title. And also in the timeline, you can edit the title here, just like a video clip. You can trim the length by shortening or lengthening the orange handles on either end, or you can even move the clip to an entirely new video track. If you want to scale, rotate, or change the title's position, you can manipulate the title directly in the preview monitor, and you can drag a corner to increase the scale. Or you can hover on a corner to rotate it. To undo any of these moves, just hit Command Z on a Mac or Control Z on a PC. So this is one way to add and customize a title. The other way is to drag and drop a title template from the title panel's browse tab. From the title panel, you can actually search by keyword to find some of the templates that you might be looking for. You can also star them as a favorite. Once you find the one you like, you can drag it into your timeline and you can play it back to see how it looks with your video. So today is... Then you can double click on the title to edit the text and you can see that the elements automatically change size and respond to the text size. This is called responsive design and it makes editing fast and easy. You can also change the font type as well from the edit tab and you can change the size and color. Also from the edit tab, the other elements with the template have their own set of controls. So if there's a background shape, such as a rectangle, you can change the color parameters of that element to match your own branding. And of course, there's more than just title templates available in Rush. You will also find elements and colorful transitions, which you can drag into your timeline and modify the colors to fit your branding. So with Rush, you really have a ton of flexibility when it comes to title and motion graphics. You can choose from hundreds of professionally designed templates, which are fully customizable, so you can really make them your own. Adobe Premiere Rush allows you to easily edit video on multiple devices and then output directly for social media. Let's begin by creating a brand new project. After launching Rush, you'll see a blue button called Create a New Project. You simply click on that to get started. I'm working on a desktop, but you can also start a new project using the plus sign at the bottom of the application on a mobile device. After clicking Create New Project, the media browser appears. This is where you select media you want to import into the project. But before adding media, let's name this project. On the lower left, you'll see the word Untitled next to the Project Name field. Select that field and give the project a name. This is an important step so you don't end up with a lot of untitled projects. I'll name my project Surfing and press Return. Since I'm already down in the lower left corner of the application, I just wanted to point out that I've placed a check mark next to Sync with Creative Cloud. That's automatically saving a backup of this project to the cloud. If you want to turn that off, you'll just be saving the project locally. I'd also like you to notice there are two buttons to the left of the sync button. The filter, which allows you to search for video, audio, or images only. And then there's the sort button, which allows you to sort items by name and date created. So let's go back to the media browser and I'll show you how to add footage to your project. I've downloaded some Adobe stock footage and saved it to my local movie folder. That's living here on my computer. I can also import footage from the cloud. And if I wanted to, I could come back down to the lower left and put a check mark to copy that cloud media onto this local device. I'd like to view these movie clips by the date they were shot. I'll go back to the sort button and choose date created. Now I'll return to my movie clips and hover the cursor over the thumbnails to preview the content. I'll click the clips in the order I want them to appear in my sequence. I'd like to edit this piece to music, so I'll go back over to the local area of my media browser, select the music folder, and then navigate to the music file I want to choose. After you press Create, you'll see text that says Preparing Media as Rush optimizes the clips for playback. The clips you clicked on are added to a sequence in the order you selected them, so you're already story building. Adobe Rush sets the video frame aspect ratio based on the media you import. 
But you can change the frame orientation from landscape to portrait or square right here in the edit panel by choosing orientation from the playback and sequence options menu button. You can use the home button to return to the project browser and create another new project. From here, press the three dots at the bottom right of the project icon to turn cloud syncing on and off or to delete or rename your projects. I'll click on this project to return to the editing panel and keep working. So that's how you create a new project in Adobe Premiere Rush. Now you can add more media, reorder clips, and continue editing your project from your computer, tablet, or mobile phone. When you're working on a Rush project, you might want to add some new content. Let's take a look at how you can do that. Clicking on an existing project from the home screen will take you to the editing workspace. From here, you can access the Project Assets panel by clicking on the box icon. Now you can see all your existing media and sequences inside this project.